Hi everybody, I'm Richard White from um, Man and Machine and today we're going to have a look at some of the um, updated functionality around IFC classifications within uh, Revit 2023. Now it may be that you've been adding uh, IFC classifications into your models in previous versions of Revit in a specific way, um, whether this is through either sort of manual input of parameter data into your objects or um, through the classification manager which was available through the BIM and interoperability tools previously. So historically in, um, in Revit uh, 2021 and before, uh, we could add uh, IFC information through this classification manager. Um, in the latest version of the uh, interoperability tools, this has been now relabeled re uh, re as a standardized data tool. So this allows us to include any, any type of classification as well as things like IFC. So I'm just gonna bring this up here. Um, we have a, um, a couple of options in here to include things like uniclass data, and IFC data into our into our projects. So I'm just going to close this out, and we'll we'll, we'll show how that actually functionally works. I'm just going to move to a, a slightly cropped down version of my current model, just to just to illustrate the way you may have done it originally in, uh, and you can still do it in 2021 and before um, using this tool. So I'm just going to select, um, zoom in, and select one of these doors. Um, using the, uh, the standardized data tool, we can assign a classification um, against that object. So looking at this tool here, we can now see that it will, it will highlight um, initially various versions of IFC. So within this mapping tool, we have two versions available. We have IFC 2x3, um, which is with technical Corrigendium 1, um, and we have the, the, the most up-to-date version of IFC 4. So in, in this one, it's 4.1. Um, within here, we can select one of these elements um, and then select one of our drop-downs within here to, to trim down our list of objects. Um, or type in here a particular object that we want to look for. So in this case, it's a door. Um, what that will then do is it will cut this back down and, and add in this IFC door um, uh, parameter into our door family. So what this does is when you export this to an IFC file, it will allow you to um, make sure that you get the correct property sets attached to that object um, in relation to you know, uh, property set common, uh, you know, PSET door common, um, for doors and likewise with any other particular object that you're doing. I'm not going to assign this for the moment because what we're actually going to look at is the, the updated version of this, this tool set that's now available in Revit 2022 and Revit 2023. So within here, what you'll find is, uh, what you may have noticed when you open up models within, um, especially Revit, Revit 2023, is that um, Revit out of the box will now add in a whole load of predefined parameters around IFCs. So if I select this door and look at its type parameters, what you will notice at the bottom of this list, we now have a new group of IFC parameters in here, which will include um, uh, the entity data export as functions, as well as um, predefined IFC GUIDs, which is really, really helpful because before, to be able to include those, you would have to export the GUID first and then select an option to push that back to the family. Um, we don't have to do that now. Out of the box, Revit will add these parameters into any new file and any existing file that you open through 2023. So really, really useful way of being able to assign those. We also have our, our IFC export as function, our IFC um, predefined type functions. And within here, we now have a direct listing uh, against the IFC parameter data. So we can select within that particular door, um, picking these three dots at the far end, it will now give us a new tool palette. Um, up the top, we have uh, a drop down around the um, IFC schema versions. Um, we have three schema versions available within this particular export. Um, IFC 2x2, 2x3 and IFC 4. Um, in this instance I'm going to look at IFC 2x3 um, and then I'm going to go and have a look at um, what I want to pull this out as and this happens to be that I want to uh, assign this to a, a door. Um, what you will also notice is that for, for earlier versions you may not have predefined uh, enumerators or, or types against those particular doors. Um, and what, the, what this tool will also allow you to do is, depending on which version, you will also have access to some of those enumerators. So if I move to IFC 4 and selected a door type in here, so I've got IFC door type, we've also now got a predefined list of the IFC 4 recognized type parameters that can be added in. So we're just going to assign this as a, an IFC door with a predefined type of a door. I'm now going to go OK. 
And what this will now do is it will assign those to the type parameters. This can save a hell of a lot of time with regard to what you're trying to um, uh, set up with regard to your, your export functions on IFCs and make sure that um, you're, you're defining the correct setups without having um, the, the potential human error of typing these in, which is when, when I started doing the IFCs, it was a very much a, a, a manual process to make sure that this was uh, being defined. Now, what you have to remember is that with the type parameters, these are overriding um, parameters against the category-based setups, which can be accessed through the IFC options. So this will allow you to be much more prescriptive about which uh, objects are, are being exported and which uh, object classifications are being used for those particular objects where Revit categories aren't being you know, very defined in a, in, a, in a lot of detail. So things like speciality equipment or mechanical uh, equipment, which maybe need to be defined from an IFC perspective in more detail. Um, so that gives you a, 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 an initial basis around how you can now add in these, um, these IFC parameters a lot quicker. Um, and if you want some more information around um, cre the creation of IFCs or um, some advice about how you're dealing with your IFCs on your projects, then please get in touch with uh, Madam Machine and we'll do our best to help you. Thanks a lot.